If you've got any kind of electronics, then this is a familiar sight. Now these USB chargers clog up your outlets, they look bad, but there's actually a better way. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do the ultimate upgrade. This is a model that includes USB-A and USB-C inside the outlet, so you don't need those power bricks anymore and you get a much nicer looking solution. The first step is you'll want to decide which outlet in your house you want to upgrade. And before you begin your installation, you need to shut the power off. So hopefully you know which circuit breaker controls the outlet that you're going to work on. Now here I know it's this number 13, so I'm going to go ahead and switch it off. Now I'm at the outlet ready to begin, but before I even touch this thing, I need to make sure the power is off. So you can use a device like this. You just plug it in the outlet and those lights should not come on if the power is off. Now here I'm at a different outlet. And you can see if you plug it in and this power on, the lights are on. And you can also use a voltmeter or even one of these voltage detection pens that you stick into the outlet and that will alert you to any power that's coming out. And this is the only way to do any kind of electrical work. You've got to guarantee that there's no power on the device you're working on at all. I'll start by removing the single screw and taking the cover plate off. And now I need to remove the two screws that are holding the outlet into the junction box. Now as I pull the outlet out, I'm able to handle everything because I know that the power is off. Outlets have three types of wires going to them. You have hot, neutral, and then ground. Now your hot wires are black, and you can see here that I've got three of them on one side, and then on the opposite side I have three neutral wires along with the one ground. And this outlet's kind of like the worst case scenario because that's a lot of wires getting fed directly into it. And because I've got plenty of wire to work with, I'm gonna just go ahead and cut the ends off. But if you didn't have enough, you could go ahead and individually disconnect or unscrew each of those wires. So we're actually gonna clean this up a bit, make it safer, and then we can connect our USB outlet. And this isn't generally the recommended way to connect stuff up because you've got six wires feeding into that outlet and it's acting more like a junction box. Plus when we look at our new USB outlet, this only has two terminals on the side, one for hot and one for neutral. Now you can actually put two wires into each one of those terminals, but I've got three of each type of wire. So I'm gonna do something called pigtailing and I'm gonna use this special Wago connector. Now you could go ahead and use a wire nut if you wanted, but this makes the job a lot simpler. You start by stripping a small amount of insulation off of each wire. Now if you're wondering how much to take off, there's actually a little guide on the edge of each one of these Wagos. And now I just keep going and strip off each wire and then I can grab my connector and I want to insert each one of these wires into the Wago. Now to do that you just flip up each lever and insert the wire in as far as it'll go and then just flip the lever down. If you make a mistake you can flip the lever back up and remove it. The other great thing about these Wagos is that they're clear and you can see that the wire is actually inserted in all the way and correctly. Now we've got our huts and neutrals inside the connectors. You might be wondering how do we actually connect that to the outlet? And that's done by a process called pigtailing. Pigtailing means that you're gonna connect a short wire to each one of those connectors, and then the other end will connect into our new USB outlet. Another important tip is that the wire you use to pigtail has to be at least the same size as those wires in the junction box. Now we just need to make the final connections with our hot and neutral into the Wago connector, and then we can strip off the other end of the wire and we're ready to connect it to our outlet. You want to make sure that you go to the right screw. There's going to be a silver one and a gold one. The gold is going to go to the hot or the black wire and the silver is going to go to your white or neutral wire. And connecting it to this model is really easy. You just insert the wire into the side clamp and screw it down tight. This eliminates the need to go ahead and loop your wires, but if you want to do that method, you can also choose that as well. And if as you're stripping the wire, you end up getting too much so that you have a little bit of overhang like that, just go ahead and take the time to cut that excess off and then reinsert the wire and tighten it down. Take an extra seconds to look over all your work, make sure your wires are tight and everything looks good. But with that done, you've only got one wire left to connect and that's your ground wire. Now you're gonna reuse the hook that they had in the original outlet, but you wanna make sure that that hook is pointing in the direction that you're gonna tighten the wire. Now we can insert everything back into the box. Now some boxes are pretty tight and those connectors might seem huge, but they're nice and flat and if you press them into the side or the back of the box, they'll actually fit in there really nicely. So this may take you a couple of minutes and you wanna make sure that you don't accidentally press those levers up or disconnect any of the wires. Now once you've got everything pressed back in place, go ahead and reinsert the outlet into the junction box and you can start to tighten down those screws. Sometimes as you're pushing that USB outlet into the box, it can feel super tight and feel like it's never going to fit. So instead of just using the screws to tighten it down and kind of mangle it up, go ahead and use the palm of your hand to push the outlet into the box first. 
that presses the wires in a little bit more and it makes it a lot easier when you're putting those screws in. And remember to take an extra second to make sure that the outlet is looking level before you tighten those screws all the way down. The outlet's looking really good so we can go ahead and turn our power back on and test it out. Now I'm going to reuse that same tester I showed you earlier to make sure that the electricity is on and that it's wired correctly. Once I connect it up I can see that the top two lights are on and that's exactly what I want. Now the best part of the project is to actually check out the USB ports. So we're going to start by testing the USB-C and to do that I'm going to connect it up to my MacBook and as soon as I connect it the MacBook started charging and it's working perfectly. Now I want to check out the other USB port that's just the standard type of USB port also called USB-A and this outlet is working perfectly. So now we can go ahead and replace the cover plate and finish up this job. For $30 this is one of the best upgrades you can do because all of us are plugging stuff in and now you don't need those charging bricks anymore and your outlets are always available. Now I installed the Leviton model outlet here but there are also good companies like Eaton and Lutron and I highly recommend avoiding any of those other companies on Amazon that you've never heard of before. There's a lot of these outlets for sale, there are a lot of foreign companies and you really don't know anything about them and you don't want to go through installing or replacing this again for a long time. And lastly, electrical work is not for everyone. It can be dangerous. You can even get killed if you do it incorrectly. So I recommend making sure that this is something you want to do yourself. But if not, you can go ahead and buy the outlet that you want, supply it with a licensed electrician, and they can do the job for you in the future. So hopefully you liked this video, got you to see something you might want to consider for yourself now or maybe in the future. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.